since my doctoral thesis was on Palestinians, I spent a lot of time in Palestine. I mean, I've been there every year for the last 30 years. And I've seen the, the refugee camps in, in Jordan, which took in Palestinians, and then they took in uh, Iraqis, and now they're taking in Syrians. So it's a, and you know what? They do a lot better job than we do. They do a lot better job than we do and hosting people and being gracious to them. I just think we have this view of that part of the world as this like hostile, disorganized, uh, inhumane, violent part of the world, but when you really look at how the millions of refugees they host and how people are able to adapt to that without like hate crimes and attacks and the kind of stuff that happens in this country, you know, you have to say that, you know, First of all, our negative image of that part of the world has to change because it's not accurate. In Lebanon, one out of every th three people is a refugee right now. One out of three. <laughs> In a country that's, you know, not as developed as the United States, yet they're managing. So, yeah, I think that, you know, we need to look at how others are doing things and, and make ourselves better instead of just asserting that we are the best, which is simply not the case. As, as the immigrants to this country are more people of color, uh, there's this white backlash we see, right? I mean, it's obvious that part of the victory of the Trump election was the white backlash against the increasing numbers of people of color. So uh, if people of color who happen to be immigrants or not, um, or refugees or not, are having uh, bullying experiences here and exclusionary experiences here, that affects their um, life in this country and the quality of their life. So um, it matters. Like a lot of people think that 911 caused Islamophobia or caused anti Arab racism, but you know, that kind of collective attack means the racism was already there. Because when it's not there, as for how white people are treated, you don't hold all white people accountable for what one white person does. Even in my immigration class, where I taught about you know, race is one fundamental feature of how the immigrant experience works in this country. And even after a semester of doing that, when they do their, they have to interview an immigrant and they analyze the interview, they never mention race. Especially if they're white. It's all about their skills, their achievement, their language, their education that got them where they are today. And they never mention the fact that they're white. I think people should think that it's only by a dint of luck where they were born and the life experience they have and that we're all the same. But it's always some other people that become the victim of the failures of leaders in this country and I think that needs to be seriously questioned. See each, each different targeted immigrant group has a different thing they're blamed for. So uh, the blame of the problems of America is, has been put on the shoulders of Mexican people in this country, right? Jobs, crime, drugs. When you talk about like Arab people, it's terrorism, right? When you talk about Muslim people, it's they want to take over the country. So look at Joe Arpaio. Read what he says about Mexicans, right? Look at what our President Donald Trump, he called them rapists, right? Where do they get those ideas? Gee, I don't know. If you do nothing, you're, you're agreeing with what's going on. If you do nothing, silence is assent to what's going on. So whatever way you choose to do it, writing, speaking, demonstrating, organizing, having a club, I don't know, a book, whatever way, you know, people have to do something. I think we're increasingly, our minds are being taught to think of people as uh, economic actors only and, and freedom means uh, freedom to buy this and to buy that and freedom means freedom of choice but um, real freedom is that everybody has the opportunity to um, be they, the best they can be in their life and that means we have to um, think less in economic terms and more in terms of compassion and care.